is Vicki Stroyd. Uh, Vicki's the executive director at Alberta Theatre Projects. Uh, she's also a freelance dramaturg and facilitator, one of Canada's finest, if not the finest. That's my editorial, not her bio. Um, she's also the treasurer of the Professional Association of Canadian Theatres and a past president of the Literary Managers and Dramaturgs of the Americas, and one of my favorite people. Let's uh, welcome Vicki up to the stage. sister, auntie, partner, dramaturg, executive director. I'm also a surfer. This identity often comes as a surprise to many people. I don't look the part. I'm not lithe and lean with tan skin and salt in my wavy blonde hair. <laughs> I didn't grow up surfing. I grew up in Calgary. My family took trips to camp in far-flung places like Sundry, my only memory of the ocean as a child was my grandma getting drunk and dancing like Mata Hari with sea onions during a trip to Tofino. In my late twenties, I saw the documentary Dogtown and Z-Boys. The surf footage fascinated me. I started a collection of surf documentaries and books. My friends started to ask me when I was going to go surfing myself, and I kept making excuses. Soon. Soon. At a surf-themed birthday party when I turned 32, eight of my friends called my bluff and got me a gift certificate for surf lessons in Tofino and a flight certificate to get me to the island. It was the most important gift I ever received. That shark is made out of a Twinkie, by the way. <laughs> this is my first surf class with Surf Sisters in Tofino in 2010. It started with a demonstration of the correct way to fall off a surfboard. Falling is a big part of surfing. We call it wiping out. I've been on two or three surf trips every year since then, and I've wiped out all around North America and in Nicaragua. <laughs> My most memorable lesson came in 2012 in Seal Beach, California with Eminem Surf School. It's a father-son operation uh, run out of the parking lot at the beach. This is Mike Pless Jr. Mike was the first to get me standing up and riding without wiping out. If there's a movie made of my life, he's going to be played by Woody Harrelson. <laughs> I had the mechanics of riding figured out. What Mike helped me overcome was my fear. I would get going, stand up, and immediately fall over. I knew what to do, but I was either waiting too long to take a chance or throwing myself <coughs> off the board before I could ride. But the goal was to stay up, not to fall down. I was too scared to give up control and trust myself. I was missing out on the reward that comes with the risk. Falling was something I knew I could do. Standing up was the unknown. I love this shot from that session. It looks like I'm carving into a great turn, but this photo is a lie. I'm about to fall on the face. <laughs> now this is the first wave I ever surfed, really surfed. Again, looks are deceiving. It looks like I'm just standing still, but I'm surfing my first wave, and transformative moments sometimes look deceptively simple. What you can't hear is Mike and the other surfers cheering for me. This was one of the best moments of my life. But let's be clear, I'm not a good surfer. That standing ride into shore is rare, and each time I paddle out, I'm learning all over again. There are way more wipeouts than rides. Falling, getting back on the board, and paddling out has taught me a lot. And Surf's Up is actually a very good surf film, seriously. <laughs> Learning something as physical and difficult as surfing in your 30s makes you very humble. I quickly learned that my pride would only weigh me down. I will always look a little bit awkward and inelegant like that, and that's okay. Also, the ocean is nature's neti pot, and there's a lot of mucus involved. <laughs> so, uh, determination is required to paddle past the breaking waves to where you can catch them. With all the falling, there will be injuries. My body sometimes limits what I can do, and I've had moments of great frustration. And then a wave will pick me up and carry me into shore, even on my stomach, and all the falling into the ocean is suddenly worthwhile. For all the limitations I'm aware of in the water, I emerge from each session proud of my body, more proud of my body than I ever thought it possible. I used to live in my head a lot. It sounds silly, but surfing reminded me that I had a body and that it was stronger and more capable than I ever thought possible. 
Surfing also brought me a sense of patience, awe, and peace. The challenge of learning engages my mind and my body, but being in the ocean engages my heart. I feel like a truly integrated human being when I'm in the water. The ocean demands that you stay in the present. It's always changing and it's a powerful force. It goes at its own pace and you have to work with it. You can't bend it to your will, you must be patient. Surfing has taught me new ways to work hard, but it's also taught me the value of sitting in peace and waiting for the right wave. Of course, this journey has led me to apply what I've learned outside the water. The determination and confidence I gained inspired me to take on leadership roles in my work and also as a volunteer. And the lessons in humility and patience have helped me keep those roles and the work in perspective most of the time. <laughs> When I take a risk now, I know that I might wipe out, and if I do, I can survive it. But I also know that I need to take those risks to catch a beautiful ride. Telling Catherine that I was attracted to her a little over a year ago was a risk of the heart, and the time we spend together reminds me of my best days in the water. I really admire people who center their lives around surfing, travel, and nature, and I dream of a life of simplicity near the ocean. Two of my favorites are Liz Clark and Cyrus Sutton. Clark is a solo sailor and surfer on her boat Swell, and Sutton is a filmmaker and surfer who lives on the road. That dream is very vivid these days. I feel far away from surfing, and as a result, I feel far away from myself. The pressures in my life have me grasping sometimes for more control, and I know that's not the answer. When I feel lost like this, I book a surf trip. I need to go to the water to ride some waves and wipe out in order to regain my balance. This is a photo of my nephews and I on a surf trip, and I was going to talk about them. I really love them. Um, but this morning, after these slides, long after these slides were submitted, a surf buddy of mine in San Diego who was battling cancer passed away. So I'd like to finish by dedicating the speech to Phil Majors and his family. Um, he shared some of his surf stoke with me. And I'm glad I got a chance to pass some of it on to you tonight. Thank you very much.